right, so what makes up the, <coughs> the virtual world? 42 characters, one city, three zones, 16 mini games, 1,500 virtual items, 24 marts, online and offline play. I don't know if you can see this in the back, but we, like I was saying, it was a giant art process, and um, I want to go through what we did to actually get the um, artwork done. We started with very early sketches um, that had to get approved and then um, tweaked. So these are sketches early on of the world. We wanted to really, we thought about Smurfs. You know, Smurfs and Smurfs Village, it all meshed together. Um, so we wanted to make sure Funky's Town actually, every aspect of it was very consistent with the characters. So after we had the sketches and got approval, it's okay, let's do more sketches, but really define them. So you can see. Uh, a lot of the definition in these illustrations of some of the buildings inside. So after we got approval, we would then add some color to these illustrations, bring it some, to some life. And then, I don't know if this is the right thing or not, but after we did those color illustrations, we decided to render and uh, do 3D modeling of the whole world that um, was done in 3D and uh, we then took these uh, renderings and then hand touched every single one of them to give it this kind of modern uh, flavor. So uh, that was a very, very time consuming process given how large the world was. So what did we do after? We basically put it all together and then we made our maps for each one of the uh, zones. That's the example of the uh, city. Here is the example of the um, lava zone. One of the challenges we had was making sure all of the items that we developed fit inside the crib so you can rotate some of the items. So we had to play around with sizing, which was a real challenge to just make sure everything fit inside the room. So uh, that was one of the you know, sizing and scalability things that we had to fight against. Tools and editors. Uh, I was drinking in a bar in Ukraine one night, and uh, that's a true story, and I thought, how the heck am I going to create this thing after we had the spec? So I pulled out some napkins, and in the top left is my ideas for the editors and how we're going to build this huge world. Uh, from my sketch, I then used my favorite tool in the world, uh, Visio, to actually put together some type of wireframe for the uh, developers to kind of build the tools. And then this last image on the right is actually the end result editor uh, that we've built for the game to allow us to add new zones very, very easily. So um, the initial editor building process took a while, but now we can bang things out very, very quick. Development challenges, AKA things that sucked. Uh, project management. This is such a big project that uh, just keeping on schedule with all of the things, the art, the sound, the programming, the games, was a very, very uh, you know, challenging aspect of it. Uh, fortunately, my wife was the project manager, and she's a genius, and she got us out the door on time, so that's great. Uh, schedule and shipping dates. You know, we've been used to, you know, if it's a couple days late, it's okay. But when you're dealing with Radica and Mattel, it's like, uh, I have to ship to this, you know, to, to China on this day, and I have to manufacture on this day, and if you miss it, I'm gonna crush your head. So those things looming over us were very, very challenging, you know. The next challenge was, uh, we called the game matrix. Because we had 16 games for launch, we needed to make sure that the balance between all of the games was equivalent in terms of, um, in terms of making sure you earn the same amount of coins if you played really well in one game versus another. Uh, collision detection and walking in front and behind things. This was a very, very big challenge, one that we still haven't, um, you know, figured out. So we launched with uh, out collision detection in terms of the kind of the bots in the world talking to, you know, your character. So you actually just walk right through other people. Uh, kind of sucks, but it's one of the things that we had to cut out. Uh, we had huge memory issues with, because we built the world in Flash. We didn't think that the performance was very good as we were developing. So, um, you know, loading up this entire map in Flash was a very big challenge uh, because we wanted to make sure it was smooth scrolling rather than get to the end of the kind of this display and then a transition to the next part. If we did that, it would have been a lot easier. 
Uh, working with the hardware team that was located in China was a giant pain in the butt uh, because this was a kind of a unique uh, system and working with overseas developers is always uh, challenging. Windows Vista rocked our world because, uh, you know, just making games for Windows Vista is one thing, but then when you're talking about a USB device that has to load a driver, forget about it. It was like the worst thing in the world because I've just been used to just loading games, right? That has its own challenge. But when you're dealing with hardware, it's like a nightmare. So I, you know, give a lot of uh, credit to like people like Lexmark and you know, uh, the hardware manufacturers with printers and stuff because Windows Vista was a giant pain in the butt. We had to make sure the system was auto-updatable. So, you know, adding new zones, adding new characters, adding new items, it connects to the internet, brings down the latest files. Our process was time consuming. We didn't budget and we didn't uh, calculate enough time in our schedule uh, because of that kind of long process. But we're very happy with the results, but we were ambitious in terms of how long it would take. Then my favorite part, localization into 13 languages with all different characters uh, after the fact. So we learned at beta release, oh yeah, you have to localize into 13 characters. Uh, that sucked, but we built a tool that you know, would allow us to easily do that. But localization is just a giant pain in the butt. And then writing the test plan for this um, you know, was a very big challenge because there's so many perm permutations of what you can and can't do. So. Putting all those together, you know, they were the challenges of the development cycle. It was a great, great uh, project to work on. We shipped on time. We're going into stores right now. So Toys R Us has it uh, by the end of the summer. Uh, well, I guess it's the end of the summer now. But in a couple months, hopefully everybody will have it from Walmart, Best Buy, uh, you know, and some of your other major retailers. I think we have time for one question. All right. Who's holding the funkies? Raise one man in the back, and who's on this side? Who's, did you take that to the bathroom? <laughs> All right, who's got it on this side? All right, you can keep it. Uh, I got some collectibles for you up here. Any questions? We have time for one question. Yes, sir. Right, they gave us a, a big document of like uh, design um, um, in terms of what they were going for. And then we just had to kind of um, come up with, use that as inspiration and then uh, show them some concepts. So once we started showing them concepts, they kind of you know bought into it and we had a pretty easy going of acceptance, uh, but essentially they had final art approval but uh, they, you know, our concept artists and our art team was really great, as you can see from the stuff there. And we didn't have much kind of pushback on this kind of stinks and I need you to do a revision. All right. Thank you. See ya.